The Giants dropped their Week 13 home game to Green Bay by a score of 31-13. Green Bay goes 9-3. The Giants fall to 2-10. They have not won a game since Week 4, I believe. It's been a very long time. I forgot what winning feels like, honestly. So, there were some ups and downs in this game. I thought our quarterback had ups and downs, and we will start with the offense first. So, let's get into that. So Daniel Jones was 20-37, 240 yards, one touchdown, three interceptions. Saquon Barkley finally had a bounce-back game, 19 carries, 83 yards, 4.4 yards per carry. Caden Smith, the fill-in tight end for Red Ellison, and Evan Engram had six catches for 70 yards. He looks pretty good, honestly. I'll get into him later. And Darius Slayton had six catches for 44 yards. I think he might have had one drop in there, but still, he's looked very promising so far. So the positive, Saquon Barkley looked better. But he did leave some yards on the field. So they showed some replays that were like from behind the uh, line of scrimmage. And you can see that maybe there were some runs that Saquon could have bounced outside. But for the most part, based off what we've seen the last few weeks as compared to what we saw today, Saquon looked a lot better. So that's definitely promising. We're hoping maybe he's getting healthier or something like that. Maybe it's a mindset issue. I don't know what it is. So hopefully he just keeps playing better. Caden Smith could be a future piece at tight end. I don't know if he's going to be the guy at tight end, but he's definitely a guy they can keep for next year. I don't know what his ceiling is as, as a player, but I haven't seen him screw up yet so far. I mean, it's been two games. He's looked pretty promising so far. I mean, I don't know what to expect from him from the future, but I'm sure if Gettleman's still around next year, he's a guy that, um, you know, Caden Smith will be on this roster. So we'll see how the future plays out for him. But so far, you have to be, um, you know, pretty happy with what you've seen so far. So Daniel Jones looked really good at times. He made some really nice throws. You think of the one to Sterling Shepard for the touchdown. There was one down the seam to Cody Latimer. He had a few to Darius Slayton as well. So he had some nice throws in this game, but of course there were some bad throws as well. So a very up and down performance from him. No misses for Aldrich Rosas today. That was a big thing. I mean, you know, we're testing out new kickers the last couple of weeks and, um, Rosas, even in bad weather, responded in a very big way, so good for him. The offensive line wasn't terrible. I mean, run blocking was average, I guess, and the pass blocking was, you know, I guess I, I would say a little above average. You know, there were some plays where uh, the tackles were getting beat and stuff like that. But for the most part, I don't think Daniel Jones was sacked in this game, so got to give him some credit there, and I give Daniel Jones credit as well to get out of some sticky situations. But the offensive line did not lose them the game today, so that's a positive. Um, so they were three for four on fourth down conversions. That's definitely a big thing. There was a couple of QB sneaks in there as well. So, I mean, I'm trying to think if they had like a long fourth down conversion. There might have been like a fourth and five in there. I forget, honestly. But still, it's a good conversion rate right there. Saquon on the blitz pickup was definitely a lot better. So he had some issues earlier in the year with the blitz pickup. So that was definitely nice to see as well. And I just listed Darius Slayton. I mean, Darius Slayton, the fifth, sixth round rookie, whatever he was, he's been playing really well for us. I mean, you know, he had to step up because Sterling Shepard, not Sterling Shepard, Golden Tate was out this game. So he had a good amount of targets in this one. I think he had, um, what was it, six catches, 44 yards. So, I mean, not the best performance, but for a game with those type of conditions in the snow, it wasn't the worst performance either. And he didn't have many drops, as I said. So definitely a promising thing for him. So on to the negatives. The first drive, I mean, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to criticize Pat Sherman a couple times here so there was a third and one halfback dive on the first drive so they had a third and six there was an offsides on the defense made it a third and one it was very predictable what was happening next and um the defense for the Packers just blew up that whole play the offensive line didn't block the right guys and stuff but still it was a pretty obvious play I kind of wanted to see like a rollout of Daniel Jones and maybe he could have ran for the first down or just threw it to a tight end I thought the halfback dive right there was a very, very like noticeable play, and I didn't really like the play call there. The three interceptions for Daniel Jones. So, trying to think of them all right now. So there was a couple that were just plain overthrown. I mean, there were some like deep slants, and I think he just overthrew his guy twice. There was one on a comeback route. The first one, I think, to um, is it Desmond King or something, whatever his name is on the Packers. I mean, he basically just jumped the route. So I mean, Daniel Jones. I mean, that's kind of what he does. I mean, I'll get into that later as well, but. You know, he's a guy who will make some very nice plays at times, and then he'll just do something stupid. I mean, he's kind of like the white James Winston in a way so far. Um, he still has time to obviously fix that stuff. But right now, um, you just have to deal with it. You know, he's 22 years old. It's his first time in the NFL. So, I mean, it's fine. You're 2-10. and 10. I mean, you know, if you're going to learn at any point, you might as well learn now in a lost season. So, I'm completely fine with that, and hopefully he gets better. The throwing short of the sticks, so that kind of annoys me. It's been it's been going on way before Pat Shermer, honestly. It was happening in the McAdoo days as well. So, I mean, there's a lot of situations where it's third and five, even fourth and six, whatever it is, and they're throwing like two or three yard passes, and defenders are right next to these guys, and they're just short of the sticks. I mean, 
I, sometimes it works. Sometimes a guy will miss a tackle, but you're just banking on a missed tackle, and it doesn't always happen. So I always like to just take risk and maybe throw it a little bit deeper. I know some defenses pre- prevent that from happening, but you know throwing it short of the sticks is usually not going to work. So that kind of annoys me as a fan, but I'll try to look at the other camera views and see if there are other options on those you know third and uh, third and medium or fourth and medium type plays. Um, so next we have, why are we giving crucial third downs to Damari Scott? So I don't even know who Damari Scott was. He took uh, Benny Fowler's number, and we're giving him like this um, wide receiver reverse play. Basically fumbled the ball, didn't catch it or hold on to it right, and turned a third down into a fourth down punt situation. So I don't know what you're doing there if you're Pat Shermer. This guy's not touched the football all year, and then you're giving him a crucial third down situation. The announcer brought it up as well. I completely agreed. It was just not the right time to implement that guy into your offense. It didn't really make sense to me. There was a miscommunication play between Saquon and Daniel Jones on a first and 10. Daniel Jones basically just held onto the ball, and they took a sack or a loss, whatever you want to call it. It was like a, you know, a first and 10 that turned into a second and 14 after that. I don't know whose fault it was. I believe it was supposed to be a running play because the offensive line looked like they were prepared for a running play. Don't know who to blame, honestly. I don't know if they'll come out and say anything about it. Maybe I missed it, so let me know if the uh, you know Giants coaching staff talked about that. But that's just stupid stuff like that. You know, When you're 2-10, and 10, you cannot afford to do stupid things like that where you're just throwing plays out the window and you know taking four-yard losses for no reason so there's stuff they had to fix obviously but the offense for the weather conditions wasn't terrible I mean the turnovers were not great obviously I thought they moved the ball pretty well Jones still had what was it 240 yards that's not that bad Saquon had a good game as well so it's not the end of the world but the turnovers were the big issue in this game obviously so if they fix that up and you know maybe they would have scored more points obviously so uh, it's not the end of the world as I said but they have to get better as the season goes on and of course for next year as well So on to the defense. So the positives I have is that the run defense has picked it up lately. They allowed 79 yards to Aaron Jones and even Aaron Rodgers runs and Jamal Williams. Those are all pretty good running backs, especially Aaron Jones. I like him a lot. So, I mean, the Giants uh, run defense has picked it up lately. I think against the Jets, Le'Veon Bell did not do much against them. Uh, the Bears game, I mean, the Bears can't run in general, but still, the Bears game, they did pretty well against uh, David Montgomery. So, I mean, probably since the Cowboys game. I don't know what Zeke's numbers were off the top of my head. I'm sure he had a decent game, but, um, you know, the run defense has been better since Leonard Williams has been here, and same with Dalvin Tomlins, and he's been playing very well. Uh, Julian Love, I mean, that's a guy who played a lot more today because of Jabril Peppers being out for most likely the rest of the year. I don't know if he's on IR, I forget, honestly, but um, probably won't play the rest of the year. It makes no sense. I mean, Julian Love made some nice plays in this game he did force a fumble at one point he had a nice tackle the fumble went out of bounds so it really didn't count but still it's a forced fumble nonetheless on a guy like Devontae Adams so that was very impressive he had a nice tackle on like a third and medium play that was in the flat it was a big play to force the Packers to punt so he was pretty good honestly I mean you know no one else on defense really impressed me honestly when I went back and watched this game I wasn't too impressed with anybody else but to see a guy like Julian Love uh, just play good football. I mean, even Sam Beal, I guess. I haven't really noticed him in a bad way yet, so I guess he's doing some good things. So I got to point out Sam Beal in a positive way. i um, trying to think. DeAndre Baker, I think maybe might have been a part of that big catch to Lazard on his first reception on the diving catch, but he didn't have that bad of a game either. So, I mean, the cornerbacks, the young corners weren't that bad in this game, honestly. Ballantyne, I think, left the game with, uh, I forget what it was, honestly, concussion maybe? I forget what it was, but I think he left the game. We saw a lot of Grant Haley in the second half, and even he wasn't that bad. I think he gave up one big fourth and ten to Geronimo Allison, but outside of that, he wasn't terrible either. So, the negatives here, so the two deep balls to Lazard. So, I think one of them might have been Baker's fault, and of course the other one was blatantly Antoine Bethea's fault. He got turned around, and Lazard had an easy touch down on the whole left side of the end zone so can't do that as a free safety Alec Ogletree continues to be a liability so the guy playing next to him honestly is a positive David Mayo has been not bad honestly lately I mean he has a very good PFF grade from what I saw and he's not a guy that I look at and say like oh he's costing us games like he's been holding his own honestly he hasn't been that bad I know we want to see Dion Buchanan play more but maybe there's a reason David Mayo is playing so I mean he's definitely been a nice find by Gettleman I'll give him that but the guy he traded for, Alec Ogletree, and making $12 million this year, not so good. That's not a guy I want to have a bunch of cap space tied into, and Ogletree has been pretty awful this year, honestly. Um, there was too much time for Aaron Rodgers to throw. They did not sack him at all. There were no sacks in this game. It's very surprising based off the weather. I mean, when there's crappy weather, sometimes you get some more sacks and stuff like that, but we didn't see any today for either side. So, I mean, the Giants 
at some points got pressure. I mean, Marcus Golden had a quiet game for the most part. I think their right tackle, Brian Balaga, did a great job on him. I mean, that's they have great tackles on the Packers. That's what they have. And, um, you know, Lorenzo Carter didn't really, you know, bring his name up much. But really not much pressure, honestly. So Aaron Rodgers had a lot of time to throw in this game, and that's why he put up some really good numbers in this one. And when he was against his own defense, Rodgers tore them apart. And I'll get into that later as well because one of the Giants cornerbacks spoke up about playing too much zone defense and not being happy with the scheme so that's pretty much it for the defense <clears throat> it wasn't the worst performance in the world I think if it was good weather it might have been like you know probably worse but at the same time I mean look it's Aaron Rodgers the Packers offense was in a bounce back situation they got embarrassed on I think Monday night Sunday night football whatever it was against the 49ers they were going to come out and have a good game it is what it is the Giants are the get right team it should not surprise anybody so the general notes. So once again, they were in this game. The Giants in the fourth quarter every week seem to collapse. I don't know what causes it. I don't know if there's like a lack of concentration, if it's bad coaching, if guys are just getting tired or hitting a wall because most of these guys are young. But honestly, it's it's kind of frustrating because they're always in games in the third quarter, it feels like. I mean, you think back to that New England game. They were in that game in the third quarter. Um, the Dallas game, even they were in it in the third quarter. I mean, you know, then the cat walks on the field and we know the rest, but at the same time, they were in this game. It was 17, 13 at the end of the third quarter. And then the Packers had a bunch of, uh, like red zone opportunities and they finally put one in. I forget who scored. I think it was Devontae Adams in like the middle, basically just mossed a guy. I forget who it was, but still, I mean, they were in this game for the most part. So that's definitely a positive. Um, yeah, I got into it too many fourth quarter collapses. I mean, if I go back and look at the Giants, you know, point differential in the fourth quarter, it's definitely not pretty. So, I mean, um, I might go and look back at that just for my curiosity because it's definitely not a good number. And another thing, why are we surprised about Daniel Jones? So, of course, I see on Twitter a lot that people are upset with Daniel Jones and the turnovers, and I get it. But at the same time, why are we surprised? Because, like, there was a reason that there were knocks on this kid. I mean, he had turnover issues. He had times in college where he just made some very boneheaded decisions throwing the ball. And I pointed that out when I was going over him. I mean, that was one of the reasons I had him ranked below Kyler Murray and um, and Drew Locke. I mean, I wasn't really in love with the decision making. I understand he had some crappy teammates and the stats should have been better. But at the same time, I mean, Cutcliffe couldn't figure out his ball security issues. The Giants seemed to can't figure him out with the fumbles. He was fumbling in college, and now he's doing it again in the NFL. And he still makes some very questionable throws. I mean, I know he had a streak of not throwing an interception for a while, but there were a couple throws against the Bears that should have been intercepted. I forget the Jets game, but... Still, sometimes you get lucky with dropped interceptions. So, you know, I, he's only 22, as I said before. I'm not giving up on him yet. I think I've seen enough good things from Daniel Jones to make me believe he can still be a franchise quarterback. But at the same time, you kind of, you know, game by game, hopefully get better with the turnovers. But this was a performance that it wasn't that great for the interception department, obviously. But I did tweet out that I was very satisfied because instead of seeing 20 checkdowns to Saquon Barkley like Eli Manning was doing last year, at least Daniel Jones is being aggressive. He sees the scoreboard and sees they're down two possessions, and you've got to take shots. I mean, you're not going to get back into a game just with checkdowns. It just does not happen. So I give Daniel Jones credit for trying to make something happen. And the last thing here is Janoris uh, Jenkins is upset with James Betcher. So basically what it came down to is that Janoris Jenkins – says all these other top corners in the league are guarding guys one-on-one -on -one in man defense, and we're not doing the same here. And I guess Shanor Shakens considers himself one of the better corners in the league still, which is fine. I, I appreciate that you have confidence and pride in yourself, but um, he's not a fan of the defense they play here. I don't know why it took him 13 weeks to speak out about it. I don't know why he never pulled Betcher off to the side and said, hey, coach, like I, I kind of want to play man more. Like I don't know why this has to be a public thing in the locker room, but – um, it's not a good look, and I mean, this guy has a very legitimate chance of being bought out of his contract or released next year. Um, maybe he'll come back with this team, but it's it seems like it's unlikely at this point. I don't know. I mean, I'm very on and off with that. Sometimes I feel like Janoris will be back next year. Sometimes I don't. So based off this quote, and you know, maybe if they get a new defensive coordinator that he really likes, then maybe he'll want to stay. But him and James Betcher is just not a match made in heaven right now. I think Betcher's job is definitely done. I don't see any way he retains his job. Um, Pat Shermer, I would say, is probably like 85%, 90% out of the door. I mean, there's really nothing that he's proven so far 
that can um, keep his job. And I feel bad for him. I don't think it's all his fault. I've definitely defended Shermer a lot more than other people. But, you know, the talent on this roster sucks, and there's really not much his coach can do about it. I think he deserves some credit for keeping his team in the game for three quarters most of the time, but they always fall apart in the fourth quarter. So the Giants issue is a talent issue. I mean, just because, you know, don't think that if they draft Chase Young that everything's going to be solved. That's not the issue. I mean, there are so many issues with this team from top to bottom. I always, you know, pick on Dave Gutter rightfully so in my opinion but at the same time John Mara just you know has his foot in the door too much with the decision making here and there's just so many issues I mean the stuff Gettleman does and um some of the decisions that Pat Shermer makes as well I mean it's just up and down even the talent on the team I mean guys aren't playing well I mean guys sometimes have to look themselves in the mirror and say hey maybe this is a me problem you know like it's sometimes it's not always on the coach it's not always on the GM sometimes guys are brought in here and are not playing well like, for example, I always support Dave Gettleman for the Nate Solder signing. I said, look, you can't go into 2018 with Eric Flowers. You can't do it. If you wanted to draft someone, that's a different story. But you can't go into 2018 with Eric Flowers at left tackle. So when he signed Nate Solder for an inflated contract, I was like, all right, I mean, you had to do it. I'm not too mad about it. And I can't be mad at Gettleman because Nate Solder hasn't played up to his standards. I don't know if he's still feeling that ankle injury from the offseason or whatever it is this year, but he has not played good football for the Giants. He had a good second half last year, but he's been, I guess, injured or just overall just not good. And, um, you know, I can't blame Gettleman for that, though. You know, that's that's a signing that you basically had to make. I mean, maybe you could have went out and traded for somebody else, but at the same time, you kind of had to do it. Your back's against the wall. That's a Jerry Reese problem that had to be addressed. I think a lot of people blow the whole Jerry Reese uh, thing out of proportion that this is all his fault. Because, I mean, look, how many Jerry Reese guys are still on this team? Like five or six? I mean, I don't like to completely blame Jerry Reese for all the problems that go on here. But um, Gettleman signing Nate Solder, you can put that on Jerry Reese. That's fine. I mean, that's that's not it's not Jerry Reese signing him, but Jerry Reese put this team in that left tackle hole. So I, I completely get it from that standpoint. So I'm probably rambling at this point. Same stuff, different week. Um, I'll come out with some videos about some future head coaching candidates. I have one about Matt Rule that I have written up, so hopefully I'll do that soon. Maybe tonight if I feel like doing it. So, um, you know, hopefully you guys enjoy those videos. If you want some other Giants-related videos, let me know in the comments. I mean, maybe some future GM searches and, you know, other head coaching jobs, defensive coordinators and stuff like that. Um, hopefully in the coming months I'll be going over some college players I like and stuff like that. So it'll be fun, you know, fun channel for the next few months hopefully. And we'll try to get through this uh, crappy season together. And hopefully you guys enjoy the upcoming videos. So thanks for watching, and I'll talk to you guys next time.